Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you really love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for pricing. That is tmasso at the 1916company.com for pricing. Today, we launch one of the definitive Jaeger LeCoultre watches of the 2000s. Debuted in 2005 and made in 200 pieces in a combination of titanium and platinum all in one assembly, this is the Master Compressor Extreme World Chronograph. This was Jaeger LeCoultre's response to the success of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore and the Hublot Big Bang, and frankly, Jaeger LeCoultre being the watchmaker's watchmaker, outdid both of them by miles. Many versions of this watch were made, but this is one of the original two variants as it has the combination of a platinum outer case and a titanium inner case. Again, 200 pieces made. You know you're looking at the platinum when you have this sort of silver steel gray dial rather than the silver dial of the titanium and steel. So lots to love here. The watch is big. And big was bold, and bigger was better, and biggest was best in the 2000s. So 46.3 millimeters, 16 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, 54.9 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, believe it or not, I owned the Extreme World Alarm version of this watch, which I enjoyed greatly. One difference between mine and this one was that mine had a conventional straight spring bar on its bellows style strap. And this one has a conforming strap. So this strap flares out a little bit more than mine did. You can get the other style strap from JLC, but it's easier to wear a watch like this on a smaller wrist when you've got the strap that has the full range of motion. Whereas this one you can see being cinched right up. It has a little bit of flare. I can't pull it straight down. It has that around and back style curve born of stiffness. So on this strap, I'm gonna recommend this watch for a wrist of 17 centimeters circumference and up. It's flat enough considering how compact everything in it is. I mean, there's a lot that's crammed into this watch. It could very easily have been 19 millimeters thick. So 16 is quite a feat of packaging and you'll find out why. The lugs are right out over the edge of my wrist though it's not offensive from a fit standpoint if you have the other strap. There's also a leather strap that goes with this watch. So that's how the straps are set up. And you can see that JLC made this easy to do. There's a pull tab. You just pull this little switch back and the lugs, they retract. So you can pull the strap out, which means unlike almost every proprietary quick change lug system, this one doesn't require a proprietary strap. Any 22 millimeter strap will work fine. So JLC gave you the quick release, but didn't lock you into using a factory strap. We have these little sort of simulated skeuomorphic perforations. They don't actually go through all the way. And then we have some molded character lines in profile. You can see there's a little bit of evacuation on the bottom to make the strap more flexible. A brand new JLC rubber factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. We have the Jaeger LeCoultre matching pin buckle. We also have a case that's made of many parts. Now, this is a watch that you want to send to JLC for service because most watchmakers will give up trying to open it and they'll probably cause damage doing so. There's a reason, you know, JLC advised factory service only. And in the early days, factory service on these meant they went back to Switzerland. That's no longer the case. These can be done in the United States today, but you still want a JLC watchmaker working on it. And it's because this inner case is separate from the outer case. The outer case has these four lugs lugs, and then you can see it has this, this sort of backing plate that goes all the way around. The inner case is made of titanium, and there are spring shock absorbers between them. When this watch debuted, members of the press were encouraged to do everything from hit baseballs to golf balls, whack tennis balls. There was even a carnival-style bell hammer game where you smack a platform and try to hit the bell, and you could use the watch during that. This is perhaps the most shock resistant watch launched in the 2000s. It also has 100 meter water resistance in JLC's compressor crown system that debuted on the Master Compressor series. So this is really easy. You have one quarter turn to lock and unlock the chrono pushers and one half turn to lock and unlock the crown. 100 meter water resistance, now you can wind it, now you can set it. 100 meter water resistance and it's color tight. So you have white or tight, 
and red, you're dead. Just like that. It's also easier to manipulate if your hands might be wet, sweaty, or gloved, so it's more practical than a tight screw-down crown would be in those conditions. And you have little color-coded keys for the chronograph pushers as well. On the dial, not only do we have a chronograph, we have world time. And there is a little trigger that allows you to set your reference city. So a bit unusual, most of these world time watches want you to put your reference city at 12. Here you could see that it's actually at six o'clock and the fact that Caracas, Venezuela is on here is a little bit of an element of nostalgia. It's been true since World Time watches with this Louis Cotier system debuted in the 1930s that the reference cities have changed, and in some cases, the same cities have gone by multiple names over the years. So again, the fact that you do have Caracas instead of, say, Denver right there, uh, it, it does give you a little bit of an insight into what the references were back when JLC was designing a world timer for the mid-2000s. So the way this works is you've got this counterclockwise rotating reference ring. You can see one semicircle is kind of dark, one semicircle is kind of light. That's approximately the place where it is nighttime and daytime respectively. And what you do is, as you turn the time, you'll note that ring moves counterclockwise. And let's say I am in, well, let's just place me where I am. I am in New York, well, I'm in Philadelphia. So I'm going to use New York. Since I'm in Philadelphia, U.S. East Coast time. By the way, a lot of world time watches just slide this ring back and forth. JLC installed a really snappy detent, so each one of these cities snaps into place. It's really positive and appealing. So now you can see in New York, it is currently about 10 o'clock. So it's currently 10 o'clock, and I can see it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And I can also see that in Bangkok, it's 10 o'clock at night. When it is 2 a.m. in Noumea, it's 2 p.m. in the Azores. That's how you read it. You have a reference hour next to the reference city, and then you just take your minutes at center. So that's how this system works. And you can read 24 principal time zones simultaneously. You can also see one of the interesting features here. JLC added shading by applying a sapphire that covers half the dial. You can see that better from this angle. It's an interesting touch that adds a lot of nuance. It's easier to see in person than it is on camera. We'll do a quick loom shot here. If you look carefully, you can see JLC borrowed the indices and the font from the Polaris 68 dial design. You can also see we have not so much running seconds, but a diver down style function indicators. So you know the watch is operating. There's a silver sunburst at the dial at center. We have a scrolling disc for chrono hours and then a little rotating pointer for chrono minutes and it is instantaneous jumping. The watch also has a number of features that are handy. A lot of world time and GMT style watches don't have a conventional quick set and this watch absolutely does. And of course once you put the watch in setting mode you activate hacking seconds. Now everything as you can see moves in sync. That counterclockwise reference ring. It's easier to see the sapphire as it's moving, this, this dial side sapphire that's used over the world time display. Now, inside we have caliber 752, which is a JLC manufacturer automatic with twin barrels for super stable flat torque curve timekeeping. And it has 65 hours of reserve, beats weigh at 4 hertz or 8 beats per second, pivots on 41 joules. It has the hacking seconds and the quick set, the world time, and a chronograph that includes a column wheel for crisp function cycling and a vertical clutch. So there's no jump or extraneous movement when you start the chronograph. A lateral clutch has chronograph seconds jump. A vertical clutch does not. Again, 65 hours of reserve. If you want, you can leave the chrono running full time because with a vertical clutch, there is no additional wear and tear. This watch also uses JLC's then new unidirectional winding system with ceramic bearings. Those two features in tandem making for very, very efficient winding. And because it's free sprung, it's very shock tolerant and can be adjusted very precisely using a variable inertia free sprung balance. But there's more. The stud 
that holds the hairspring has been laser welded to the hairspring for even greater shock resistance and durability. Plus, it has been through the master 1000 hours control, which you can see advertised on the case back. A 41 plus day test of the fully assembled watch with chronometry tested in six positions. Tests of durability, water resistance, shock resistance, winding efficiency, and power reserve. It was one of the first in house standards to go beyond the COSC, and it's been applied to the movement inside of this watch. And remember, immensely shock resistant and 100 meters water resistant. The Royal Oak Offshore and the Hublot Big Bang were big, but that was about it. JLC proved that bigger really could be better by adding room for more features and refinement. If you love this watch, you should know it is a GPHG Laureate. In 2005, it won the Sports Watch Prize at the Oscars of Watchmaking, and it is made of titanium and platinum. So despite being partially titanium, it feels in the hand a lot more like platinum. Reach out to Team Also at the 1916 Company for purchase and pricing details.